Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Today we are going over most of the Easter eggs in Spider-Man 2. Now, not all of them because there are a lot and maybe I'll do a part two with the rest of them. I don't know. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. There are a lot, and I mean a lot, of Daredevil Easter eggs in this game. I'm sure you've heard about some of them and how they may be a hint to a Daredevil DLC or Daredevil game. I have multiple videos about this. If you do want to find out more about that, be sure to check that out. First located here is Nelson and Murdoch. Obviously, their place of business. I'm sure you already know everything about how the plaque went missing and stuff. Next, at the end of the final Sandman mission, whether you play as Peter or Miles, they'll mention contacting Peter's lawyer friends to help him. Then right over here is a bookstore, but you can actually go inside and it seems to be related to the hand with a whole bunch of guns and artifacts as well as the symbols. It's also possible that this is related to the flame as well, but the symbols is not the flame symbols. So it seems like it's related to the hand, though maybe it's just an Easter egg to the hand and isn't hinting at anything. Well, the original Fisk Tower is no longer owned by him he does have a new Fisk tower in the game right over here and this was actually under construction in both previous games both the Miles game and the first PS4 game speaking of construction over here we have Union Allied Union Allied is a business owned by Wilson Fisk from the Daredevil TV show you can also find a Union Allied construction site here which has some interesting wording on the sign as, as well as a broken interaction button which maybe means something you may remember Rosemans from Spider-Man PS4 and how they were selling the Wilson Fisk collection in the first MJ mission. Well, here you can find a Roseman's building where they have the Wilson Fisk collection. Here you can find Fogwell's gym, which is a location in the Daredevil comics where his father trained as a boxer. Then here you can find Josie's bar, the watering hole for most of the Daredevil characters. There's also multiple Fantastic Four references in the game, the biggest being the Baxter building, home of the Fantastic Four. This is exactly where the original Fisk Tower was. You can see they haven't fully moved in yet, but they have started painting their logo on the roof. Then there's the new blue suit for Peter, which is one of the multiple Fantastic Four suits he's had in the comic. While the first color is just the other two are references to other Fantastic Four suits he's had, including the black and blue and the Future Foundation suit. Speaking of Future Foundation, one of the spider bots in the game is a Future Foundation one. The classic black suit styles also include multiple references. The purple is based off of the Ultimate Comics, but it also looks like this in multiple other universes, including the Web of Shadows game. The white color is obviously based off of Anti-Venom, and the final one where it has this red and blue shading is based off of the 90s animated series where Venom always had red and blue on the side. There's also another reference to this when Peter is removing the symbiote. He's shaded half red and half blue. There are multiple Black Panther references here as well, including the Condon Embassy located over here. And if you're playing as Miles, you can even do this. Speaking of Miles, Miles also has the Wakanda Forever suit. This is based off of a variant cover made by Boss Logic, and this suit also includes a reference to the first Black Panther film. If you listen closely, this suit does not make any sound when walking. There's also a lot of reference to the X-Men here, including what appears to be Xavier's School for Gifted Youngsters, also known as the X-Mansion. Here at the top of the map is where you will find it, and it's actually one of the locations the flame is using. It's very clearly abandoned and also damaged even before the fight, but you'll find a familiar X logo graffitied on the walls. This isn't 100%, it's just something that I and a lot of other people have thought. Miles' What If Wolverine suit is also here, and includes multiple references with each style referencing different Wolverine suits, including the classic blue and yellow, the brown and yellow one, and his X-Force gray suit. On a screen during the story, you'll be able to see a shipping chart, and one location mentioned is Madripoor. This is a location heavily tied to the X-Men, and also appears to be where the Wolverine game may take place. You can also find a reference to Trask Industries, the creators of the Sentinels. Heat Superior suit includes a reference to Doc Ock's time as the Superior Octopus with this color scheme. In Spider-Man 2, multiple of Peter's suits change the color and model of his iron arms, including the Superior suit and its styles. Both Iron Spider suits, the Noir suit, and the Como suit do this. There are a lot, and I mean a lot, of references at Coney Island, some obvious and some not so obvious. First, the Ferris wheel is is a reference to Big Wheel, who was also referenced in the Miles Morales game. The Hydro Bench is possibly a reference to Hydro Man. The Roller Coaster is a reference to Speed Demon, and they even have a chibi version of him at and around Coney Island. The Octopus Ride, which has a clear Doctor design, is obviously a reference to Doctor Octopus. Kardinsky's Arcade is a reference to the villain Arcade, whose real name is Kardinsky. The Hydra Head Hater game is maybe a reference to Hydra. The Enforcer game may be a reference to the Spider-Man villains known as the Enforcers. The Rocket Racer Ride is a 
reference to, you guessed it, Rocket Racer, a villain turned hero. The Overdrive ride is maybe a reference to the villain of the same name, Overdrive. The Time Twisters may be a reference to the Time Twisters from the comics, but I don't know about that. Some of these may just be named that because they sound like good ride names. The King Crab Water World may once again be a reference to King Crab. There's also Dazzler's Stage, a clear reference to the mutant singer, Dazzler. And lastly, the Flying Mantis could be a reference to Mantis. Something you most likely missed is when you unlock one of the Spider-Verse suits, your first one, a message will briefly pop up mentioning the film style animation option, but it also mentions the comic SFX. If you do decide to enable it, this will happen. There are two references to Stan Lee, the first being the Stan Lee statue from the previous game, but there is also another on the Spider-Verse store suit. If you zoom in close, you'll see a tag labeled Stan's Costumes, and in little text, it says it always fits eventually. Over here, you'll find Smythe International, which if you don't know, Smythe is a Spider-Man villain who created the Spider Slayers, which seems to have not happened in this universe, at least not yet, maybe DLC. Next is a few references to Insomniac Games. First off, on the Spider-Verse store-bought suit, instead of a Nike logo like in the film, the Insomniac logo is on the shoes instead, and you can also find their building in the game. Down at the bottom of the map, you can find a statue of Lockjaw, the Inhuman Dog, which is also a reference to a statue in New York, the Charging Bull. Over here, you will find Horizon Labs, a location from the comic. There are multiple Defenders references in the game, even outside of Daredevil, first being for Jessica Jones. Here you can find Alias Investigations, which is run by Jessica Jones. Right next Next to the Radio City Music Hall, you will find the Rand Corporation, which is owned by Iron Fist, aka Danny Rand. And of course, the comic version of the Defenders includes Doctor Strange. And not only do you get a note from Wong, but you also can see the Sanctum right here. There are also multiple references to the Avengers. First is the Captain America Frisbee, used by multiple NPCs, and second, and more obviously, the Avengers Tower. Two different suits in the game have special wings. The first being the Civil War Secret War suit, which has special Falcon wings, and the Noir suit, also has special wings. The main reference for Spider-Man Noir is the Rubik's Cube that's in the game. When diving as Peter, you can actually use this Rubik's Cube as an animation. There's also a not so much Easter egg, but rather a fun trick you can do. By enabling a, the high contrast background in the settings, you can swing in a black and white New York. The Image Control is a cleanup company from the comics co-owned by Tony Stark and Wilson Fisk, which cleans up after super-powered battles. Both the damage control building and multiple sites where they are cleaning up are in the game. There are multiple references to Miles' game. First, the cube from the game can be found on the church and interacted with. Roxxon Plaza is in the game as well, albeit destroyed from the events of that game. You can also find Rick and Finn's graves in the cemetery at Harlem. Speaking of graves, you can find both Ben and May's grave as well, and Jefferson Davis's grave. One of the poses in the game is a reference to a meme based off of the old Spider-Man show, where Spider-Man lays in a very sensual pose. Pose. You can even perfectly replicate this by laying on the tracks. There are multiple hints and references to the Green Goblin in Spider-Man 2, the most obvious being the mention of the G serum, but there is also a mural depicting Norman very similar to the ultimate Green Goblin, breathing fire and having horns. Down by Coney Island, you'll also find this sign, which has graffiti with devil's breath in green and purple. Interesting choice of colors. For completing the story, you'll also be able to find Craven's tiger at the zoo. There are multiple references to Noel in the game, some obvious, some not. First, the king in black suit has Noel's logo. His symbol is also on the rock or meteor, the symbol on the actual symbiotes in the game. There are multiple references to Venom's offspring, the most obvious being Carnage and Scream, but each of the normal symbiote enemies is a reference to his children as well. The red one is a reference to his combined children, Hybrid. Pink one is a reference to Agony. The large gray and blue one is a reference to Riot. The yellow one is a reference to Phage. And lastly, the green one is a reference to Lasher. Now, that is actually all of the Easter eggs in today's video. I already know there's a whole bunch more, and I will maybe do another video depending on how good this video does. So uh, if you want this video to get a sequel, you know, just uh, leave a like, subscribe, comment, and uh, maybe share it to some people. I don't know. Anyways, I'll see you guys all next time. Goodbye.